Hello and welcome to Fernhill School's Book at Bedtime. I'm Mrs Nunnally and I'm going to read to you tonight the first instalment of our chosen novel which is Lewis Carroll's Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Join us every night to see a different member of staff from Fernhill School read to you a different instalment every night. We really hope you enjoy this, so get comfortable, get a nice hot drink and sit back and enjoy the story. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll Chapter 1 Down the Rabbit Hole Alice was beginning to get very tired of sitting by her sister on the bank and of having nothing to do. Once or twice she had peeped into the book her sister was reading, but it had no pictures or conversations in it. And what is the use of a book, thought Alice, without pictures or conversations? So she was considering in her own mind, as well as she could, for the hot day made her feel very sleepy and stupid, whether the pleasure of making a daisy chain would be worth the trouble of getting up and picking up the daisies when she suddenly saw a white rabbit with pink eyes run close by her. There was nothing so very remarkable in that, nor did Alice think it so very much out of the way to hear the rabbit say to itself, Oh dear, oh dear, I shall be late. When she thought it over afterwards, it occurred to her that she ought to have wondered at this, but at the time it all seemed quite natural. But when the rabbit actually took out a watch of its waistcoat pocket and looked at it and then hurried on, Alice started to her feet for it flashed across her mind that she had never before seen a rabbit with either a waistcoat pocket or a watch to take out of it. And burning with curiosity, she ran across the field after it and fortunately was just in time to see it pop down a large rabbit hole under the hedge. In another moment, down went Alice after it, never once considering how in the world she was to get out. The rabbit hole went straight on like a tunnel for some way, and then dipped suddenly down, so suddenly that Alice had not a moment to think about stopping herself before she found herself falling down a very deep well. Either the well was very deep or she fell very slowly for she had plenty of time as she went down to look about her and to wonder what was going to happen next. First she tried to look down and make out what, what she was coming to but it was too dark to see anything. Then she looked at the sides of the well and noticed that they were filled with cupboards and bookshelves. Here and there she saw maps and pictures hung upon pegs. She took down a jar from one of the shelves as she passed. It was labelled orange marmalade but to her great disappointment it was empty. She did not like to drop the jar for fear of killing somebody, so managed to put it on one of the cupboards as she fell past it. Well, thought Alice to herself, after such a fall as this, I shall think nothing of tumbling downstairs. How brave they'll all think me at home. Why, I wouldn't say anything about it even if I fell off the top of the house, which was very likely. Down, down, down. Would the fall never come to an end? I wonder how many miles I've fallen this time, she said aloud. I must be getting somewhere near the centre of the earth. Let me see, that would be 4,000 miles down, I think. For, you see, Alice had learned several things about this sort of thing in her lesson in the schoolroom. And though this was not a very good opportunity for showing off her knowledge, as there was no one to listen to her, still it was good practice to say it over. Yes, that's about the right distance, but then I wonder what latitude or longitude I've got to. Alice had no idea what latitude or longitude either meant, but she thought they were nice grand words to say. Presently she began again. I wonder if, sh if I shall fall right through the earth. How funny it'll seem to come out amongst people that walk with their heads downwards. The antipathies, I think. 
she was rather glad there was no one listening this time, as it didn't sound at all the right word. But I shall have to ask them what the name of the country is. You know, please, ma'am, is this New Zealand or Australia? And she tried to curtsy as she spoke. Fancy curtsying as you're falling through the air. Do you think you could manage it? And what an ignorant little girl she'll think for me asking. No, it'll never do to ask. Perhaps I shall see it written up somewhere. Now, you'll have to tune in next time to hear the next member of staff read the next instalment. I hope you enjoyed that. See you next time. Bye.